Hi! In this video, we're going to talk about carbohydrates, which are biological molecules made of carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen. These molecules are used for a variety of purposes, including energy storage and structural features. Now, the simplest form of these are sugars called monosaccharides. Now, monosaccharides generally come in three forms. A six carbon form, a five carbon form, and a three carbon form. Why this is is really beyond the scope of a intro biology course, but just know that these are the most stable conformations for monosaccharides. Now, with the six carbon sugars, we call them hexose or a hexose. You'll notice that all the names of these sugars end in os. That's sort of like the signal that should tell you, hey, this is a sugar. So these specific hexoses here are glucose, this molecule, and galactose, this molecule. Now these two molecules might look pretty similar to you. The only real difference is this alcohol group or hydroxyl group right here. In glucose it's below the ring in this image and in galactose it's above the ring in the image. So this might seem like a minor difference but remember what we were talking about in an earlier video. Even a small difference in structure can result in a big difference in chemical properties. And we'll actually get back to this difference with glucose and galactose in just a second. Moving on, we have these pentoses. Just like hex means six, os means it's a sugar, Pent means five, and again, os means it's a sugar, so these are five carbon sugars. Now, these two five carbon sugars that, I've sh that I'm showing here, we're gonna see come up in just a little bit when we talk about nucleic acids. You see, this sugar right here is called ribose, and that's gonna be the sugar we see in a molecule called RNA. Over here we have deoxyribose and deoxyribose is going to be the sugar in the molecule DNA. Now this last sugar over here is a three carbon sugar. Can you guess what it would be called? If you thought triose then you're spot on. Now technically this is a triose phosphate because it has this phosphate group right there that I just circled. And you might actually recognize this molecule because it's one we've seen already. This is G3P. And this molecule is the end product of photosynthesis. Now, these monosaccharides, which are monomers of carbohydrates, polymerize through a dehydration reaction like we saw in the previous video and they polymerize to form disaccharides which are simply two monosaccharides linked together. Here this molecule right here is made up of two glucoses. And these two glucoses get together to form a disaccharide called maltose. 
Now, this is a really important disaccharide because it's the sugar that we find in beer and milkshakes. And I don't know about you guys, but I love beer and milkshakes. They're delicious. So thank you, maltose. Now, over here, we have a slightly different disaccharide. You see, this molecule is galactose, and this monomer is glucose. This disaccharide is called lactose. Now you may have heard of lactose before. In fact, you probably know someone who can't digest lactose. Lactose makes them sick. Or, as we call it normally, they're lactose intolerant. So, what I was saying before about that slight difference in the structure of glucose and galactose. Well, pretty much everyone can digest maltose, right? Even people who are lactose intolerant. Now, lactose really doesn't look all that different from maltose, right? The only real difference here is that this guy is now pointing or is located above the ring, right? That was the only difference between galactose and glucose. Yet, with this small difference, people cannot digest this disaccharide. So, it just goes to prove the point that a small difference in molecular structure can create a large difference in chemical properties. And of course, this bond has a slightly different shape than it does in maltose. This bond, however, is the same in both molecules. We call this covalent bond that holds monosaccharides together a glycosidic linkage. Glycosidic, glyc is a prefix that's often used to mean some sort of carbohydrate. So a glycosidic linkage is a link between two carbohydrates. Now, when you get a lot of these monomers together, they form what are called polysaccharides. All right, so monosaccharide, mono, one, disaccharide, di, two, polysaccharide, poly means many. And it turns out there's actually a kind of set amount for what's considered a polysaccharide. Polysaccharides are considered to have greater than 100 subunits. It turns out that if a molecule has between three and 100 subunits, it's called an oligosaccharide. <clears throat> now, this polysaccharide you see right here is called starch. And starch is made of many glucose linked together. And we're going to talk a little bit more about starch in just a moment. But before we do, I want to talk about an interesting property that monosaccharides have. Up to this point, we've only seen the ring structure of most of these monosaccharides. However, monosaccharides can actually take what's called a straight chain form, or a chain form, or a linear form. Basically, 
not a ring as you can see in this structure in the middle here and what's gonna happen is there's gonna be a reaction between this ox this hydroxyl group in blue and this what's called a carbonyl or technically this is an aldehyde again don't worry about these names these are just the proper chemical names but there's going to be a chemical reaction between these two groups and depending on the angle that this reaction occurs at we can either go to or we can either end up with I should say this structure or this structure and if you notice we have our equilibrium arrows here that means that these reactions are readily reversible but here's the thing the ring form is more stable in aqueous environments like those found in cells and generally all throughout biological systems so this means that generally when these molecules are kind of just hanging out they're gonna be in that ring form now there's one last thing I need to tell you before we turn the page and that is that these two different forms of glucose that we see here have special names you see when the hydroxyl group is in this particular conformation on the left we call that alpha glucose and when it's in this conformation on the right we call that beta glucose now you guys definitely don't need to worry about how to distinguish between alpha and beta glucose that's something you learn about in organic chemistry that's something that Johnny would teach you for now just know that there's a difference between them and we're actually going to revisit this idea and talk about why this difference is important in just a moment so let's flip the page 